paint him a little bit differently than we painted the other fella. The other fella we used a mixture of transparent red oxide and yellow ochre. And we're not going to do that on on this one. We're going to use flesh, dark flesh, and a little bit of tomato red. Although I don't know that I'm going to water down the tomato red. But let me get these colors mixed in here. And we'll get to where we needed to go. I've taken, I've taken a moment to pre-wet my guy. Because I want the paint to flow throughout all the surface of the, car, of the painting, of the carving. So I want it all to show. Give me a little paper towel out here to... Wipe my brush off. We'll mix the dark flesh, which is the second color that we got. Rinse between each one because I'm going to do something different in just a minute. And we got a little bit of red out here. It might be a little bit more than we need. Alright, I'm going to take my brush, mix this, and go straight into the next well. Back. I'm going to do that three times to get these values a little closer to each other. What I want is these colors to look and, and include color from each other. I'm not going to do that with the red because I'm going to use that for a particular reason. Okay, we're going to start with the light color. I'm going to make sure we cover the entire surface of this painting. And I usually like to work quickly. I'm not going to worry about the hair, but I usually don't care if I cover over it. But I just want to get this paint in all of this over the entire surface. And if you notice, this is a whole lot pinker than what we were doing when we painted with the red iron oxide and the yellow ochre. And so you can argue that not many people have a pink skin tone. You know, and I'd agree with you. If you're not a brand new baby, being newly born or whatever, you're not going to find many people that have that color. Hence, that's why we use the dark flesh. Okay? And I'm just going to cover in certain areas a little bit of this dark flesh. And you can't see a whole lot of change in the color, although it's a, it's a deeper pink. We'll go right into it. It's still wet. We're going to get a little bit of red on our brush. And we just want to touch in some areas. Some areas where you'd see a little more red. And this is a very strong color. It's tomato red. And it's very strong. So I do that. And then I go back into the water. And I start blending that color in. I spent several years before I started carving trying to find my way with acrylic and oils and watercolor. And what I found was that I wasn't a very good painter until I learned how to blend. And I can argue whether I was a good painter at all, but I still enjoy doing it. And uh, so we blend that out. Now we don't see that red. Now we can go back in with just a little bit more now that it's, now that it's kind of dry. We don't, it, a little bit of this goes a long way. And so we're going to make sure he's got that red to his face that we want in darker in other areas. And it's going to show up in places that, if it flows, you're going to show up in places where it runs and bleeds like that. And you've got to have an ability to move quickly and control that bleeding. Just a little bit. A bit of water. The one place I didn't get is right up here under the eyes. We want that to show up as a little bit of a shadow. A little bit more out here on the end of his nose. And I know when I go to when I go to hit this with the dryer, it's going to dry out a lot. It's going to be a lot lighter. These acrylics tend to dry lighter on wood they do, than they do on a canvas. So you, you're, the reason for that is, is the paint is simply soaking into the wood and it's no longer on the surface coloring that outside surface. Okay? If you don't like the way it red comes out, you can always go back into the flesh and you can always lighten it up a little bit. If you think some areas are just a little too dark, you can lighten them up. 
Now to me, to me that, that is too light, so I'm going to go back in while it's wet and just highlight it with a little bit of that red. Sometimes the wood has grains that run and they soak in a one color, a darker color where the others, the other grains around it won't. You know, that just adds a little more character to your carving. Okay, so we've done this a little bit differently than we've done the other one. I'm going to dry that so we can go right into the eye. Okay, just like on the other one, we'll go directly into the white. I'm not going to water that down much. I'm going to grab a couple of little drops of white here in the corner of, the, of that, uh, that well there. And we'll get just a little bit of white in there so we can paint our eyes. With white, a lot of times white doesn't cover very well because it blends in too much. And so what we want to do is make sure that we're not watering down our white as much as we are some of our other paints. So I'm going to go into this eyeball and just paint that real quickly. Again, painting eyeballs requires a steady hand and good eyesight. If you need a pair of those cheaters, as some people call them, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. And if you notice, some of that water got on the out, some of that paint got on the outside of that eyeball, so I'm just going to brush it along. If I do it enough with water, eventually that'll fade away and I'll have taken off a lot of that white that I don't want down there on the bottom. We can go up here in this corner, take it off up there too and it doesn't look quite so stark. Okay, we hit that with a dryer. White off to the side. Let's give this guy the same color we did with the green eye. And then we're going to do the same thing we did with the black. Okay. Alright, I've already got black on my other well. So bear with me for a moment while I kind of move these things around. And we'll just turn that and go back to that black that we had. So I want that black in there and I'm just gonna car I'm just gonna paint oh it's gonna run because it's not dry enough and that's not thick enough so we better use just the straight black okay painted his eye Get the hair dryer. Do the green portion of the eye. Leaving that black on the outside of it. We'll hair dry it again. Go back into the black one more time so we get that pupil, is it? quite as dry as I wanted. It's pulling up some of that gray green paint. So we'll make it bigger. Dry it. Give it 
the white highlight. Don't need much, just need enough to touch like that. Okay, we'll finish this video up right here. We'll come back and do his hair and finishing him, finish him a little bit differently than we did the other fella. And we'll call this video series good. Talk to you on the next one.